is Professor Robert Preuss from Metropolitan State University. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. You know, Dr. Preuss, one of the things I noticed at the Capitol in the first week is these first introduced bills are bringing up some things from last year that we already know likely aren't going to go anywhere with a split legislature. The high-capacity magazine ban repealing that, fetal homicide. What's the point of bringing those up knowing they're not going to pass? Yeah, well, there's a couple of big picture items here for one. Uh, keep in mind that most bills actually take several sessions to get through. So if a, if a legislator wants to get these things passed, he's going to have to reintroduce it and reintroduce it. And so that's one major aspect. But the other one is really goes to, gets down to the motivation of legislators. And they're trying to represent their constituents, and they're trying to be reelected, which is an important element as well. Uh, so these reintroductions of high-profile bills that are probably dead on arrival uh, really actually serve that purpose, and we should keep that in mind. But, but we're also talking about wasted time and money. So at, at what point are they <laughs> dead for good? Yeah, well, it's one of those things where it's really, I mean, who's to judge when it's wasted time and money versus, uh, you know, a policy that's uh, very, very fundamentally important to a constituency? And so that's, that's the element here. But these are also important pieces of legislation that allow for constituents to have a clear choice uh, in the upcoming election and allow for legislators to go back to their district and say, look, I represented your interest. There are some that, well, on the flip side, that will see compromise. Right. Uh, we already see some bills that are represented by both sides. But a couple that stood out, um, the construction defects about condo lawsuits right. to help generate more condominiums and less apartments, perhaps. Right. Another one, the statute of limitations on sexual assaults, the Bill Cosby bill, mm -hmm. essentially, is what that's, that's being called. Why would we see, are, the, are these good examples of compromise right, bills? Right, and where does compromise come from? I think it comes from two factors, actually. One is that you're going to see wide consensus. And I think that's the sexual assault uh, uh, statute of limitations removal. The other one is uh, are fairly complex issues that the public's not you know, interested in uh, but doesn't have a clear sense of which way the partisan politics plays on this or which way they're going to vote for it. Uh, and that's the condo uh, bill. What other, yeah, what other projects, what other bills do you see coming up this legislative session that you're hearing about that, that might be hot-button issues for people? Well, you know, we'll see, we'll see a slew of the usual ones. I think we'll, we'll end up seeing another uh, round of the, of the gun rights legislation right. going through, of course. Uh, I think the fetal right, uh, homicide bill will come again. Uh, we'll see teacher tenure be another, you know, kind of controversial issue, but not clearly a partisan issue. And I have, have to remember a few years ago we've uh, upheld that teacher tenure your position, um, but it did so in a bipartisan manner. So we'll have to see. But that will be another controversial issue where teachers' unions line up uh, against uh, teacher reformers as well as Republicans. Well, we'll see the Capitol start generating some uh, buzz this week as the committee hearings start up. As we talk about the U.S. Senate race in Colorado, the race against Michael Bennett, for the Republicans, we have, we have seven candidates right now. Right. And I, I hate to say, it seems like these were the leftovers of the big names that said no. Yeah, the, uh, the field was, was certainly wide open and a big vacuum came in and a lot of candidates came sucked in into that vacuum looking for a spot to win. And in a lot of ways they have a good chance of winning. Uh, we had a 2010 election with about 2% vote margin and 2014 of course uh, Gardner won with about a 2% vote margin. Uh, so there's a real good shot, but the candidates themselves, you're right, they're not well known, they're not big names, there hasn't been a cleared field, uh, and thus we have a lot of candidates coming in right now. So you're not ready to say which, which of those candidates will, will rise to the top here as the, the top candidate? No, I think it's too early to tell yeah. exactly who it's going to be. But I think there are two, you know, cer certainly John Kaiser, who has some backing from the mainstream Republicans. And I, I don't mean to give him a tag of being a mainstream Republican. I'm not so sure that flies well within the Republican caucus and primary system. Um, he's won. And then, of course, Tim Neville is trying to carry the banner right. for the right uh, wing of the Republican Party. Uh, and so those are the two folks that are battling out. But we also have uh, uh, Ryan Frazier, who's well known in the in the metropolitan area. Uh, we have uh, Robert Blayla, who has, seems to have some money, right, to spend mm -hmm. and may be able to stick in the candidate as well, as well as a whole slew of other ones that may not be well so known throughout the state. It's a race to watch. Absolutely. It's a race to watch. How much of that race will determine who the Republican presidential nominee is? Will they essentially be a ticket at that point? Yeah, I think. I think it's going to be, you know, the reverse. So the Republicans last year decided that they weren't going to really participate in the nomination process uh, by not having a, a binding ballot in their caucuses, right? And so 
Uh, what we're actually probably going to see is a little bit of both. Uh, but when it comes down to the national election, at least in terms of uh, November, uh, you'll probably see a little bit of two-way street there, right? So if the uh, right-wing, for instance, candidate, if, if, if Tim Neville wins, he'll probably bring some, or some folks that are mobilized and excited about his campaign into the presidential election. And very quickly, who do you think the uh, GOP nominee will be? Uh, for the U.S. Senate? No, I'm oh, sorry. Well, no, no, for okay. uh, president. Uh, uh, for president, the GOP nominee, I don't know. Uh, you know four months ago, I would have said, no way, question, just right? like anybody else. Four <laughs> months ago, Trump's not going to be the, Cruz won't be the, um, Carson won't be it. Um, it it's, it's too early to tell, and, and all the political science models just aren't meeting expectations this year. All right. Dr. Preuss, thanks for joining us in state politics in the U.S. Senate race. All right. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And we'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back.